Buongiorno. Yes, we are the team at the Consulate General Switzerland here in Chicago. Today, August 1st, our Swiss National Day, we celebrate the formation of the old Swiss Confederation 729 years ago. So here, what happened all those years ago? You know the story of Wilhelm Tell, which is a really good one. But how did Switzerland become the Switzerland of today? Huh, I'm a triangle here. <laughs> well, like any country, we've had our wars, our infighting, our heroes, and our savings. Let's focus on some highlights. Rewind all the way back to our origins in 1291. The three valleys, Uri, Schwyz, and Unterwalden, formed an alliance against foreign influence in the area and created the first federal charter. What I find so interesting about this charter is that it was not signed by individuals, but rather it was approved with the seal of each valley. Yes, in typical Swiss fashion. Next, we have Lucerne, which by the way is Chicago's sister city, Zurich, Clarus, Zug, and Bern joined the original three. And slowly, Switzerland as we know it today is starting to take shape. Another century passes, five more joined, and Switzerland continued to grow to the 13 Alte Orte, meaning the 13 old places, which we refer to as cantons today. The cantons are similar to the states here in America in that there's a separation of power between the federal government and the cantons. Yes, one of the many shared values between the United States and Switzerland. No wonder the two countries have enjoyed a long relationship as sister republics. Did you know, when the 13 American colonies declared their independence, democratic Switzerland with its militia army served as its model? How neat. Moving ahead, these decades were very busy. Yes, nine more regions joined, and in 1815, the Swiss borders of today and Switzerland's neutrality were recognized by the world. Following a short civil war, Switzerland adopted its new constitution in 1848, this time modeled after its sister republics. It became one of the first modern democratic constitutions in Europe. And it was written in the four official Swiss languages, Italian, Romansh, French, and German. Fast forward 150 years later, and we have Jura, the youngest canton created after a nationwide referendum and popular vote. And finally, over seven centuries in a few short minutes, here is our Switzerland and its cantons of today. And through the centuries, the spirit of one for all and all for one has been and is a common thread that ties Switzerland together. Of course, it is no surprise that the official Swiss motto is Unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno, which we saw when the three valleys first came together over 700 years ago, and which we most recently witnessed in practice during the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you, Jörg. Thank you, Roberta. And a special thank you to Ambassador Pitlu and our families, friends, and colleagues in the Midwest for posing with our Canton signs so that we can share our story with you today. We hope you enjoyed learning about the highlights of our national history. Now we're off to celebrate our national day. It's grilling, fireworks, bonfires, why not, with our cowbells. We wish you and yours a very happy Swiss National Day. Any last words? Well, Switzerland is a direct democracy, so who has the last word? Always the citizens. Happy Swiss National Day!